feels like we might be getting dive. We might be getting aggressive here. Yeah, I really like it because this has been something consistently banned um, on both sides of this matchup thus far. So certainly feeling like a big priority pick from Yankos. An opportunity for a Twisted Fate to come in as well. You know, the turn the lights on, turn the lights off yeah. composition. I very much like that. It's going to be Zaya certainly sticking with comfort here on T1's side and with Two games in the bank, you can pretty happily just play with what's worked thus far. They're not forced to make any adjustments just yet. But we'll see what the priority is going to be for the second round of picks as VA goes up, something like that. If Ona wants to go there, we'll see what he's thinking. And I was going to say that the moment you see dive, the desire just makes so much sense, yeah. right? Uh, not only has it worked so very well, but it's something that we've seen consistently work well as an answer to lots of champions jumping on my face. So. Um, <laughs> With the Leafs in there, you also have more disengaged from T1. And for me, I think that we're just seeing a lot of skill expression. Like we talked about at the beginning of game one, but things like oh, Saya, oh, things like oh, Lee Sin, it gives you so much agency to be able to make out plays. Uh, and I think T1 is feeling very comfortable with what they've gone. And this is the first time Orin has actually been left up. They banned out the R8 this time around because Caps, yes, his scoreline wasn't as impressive, but he was really having some great moments in that last game. So they weren't willing to give that over. And now MF, Orin, Nocturne, that is a lot of engage. That is a lot of dive. Uh, to really look to fight. I wonder, would they go Renata again? Because Renata was their answer to what was uh, an early kind of dive style composition from G2. First time around, they do in fact lock it in. I love this as a pick. Zaya plus Renata has to be one of, if not the best duos in bot lane at answering dive. You dive in on the Zaya into the Blade Caller, into that ultimate, and then you have the Renata ultimate flying through as well that disrupts you. And it's really difficult for MF because though it travels slowly, it has great range and can actually reach the MF from uh, pretty much outside of MF's ult range. I was going to say it also means that T1 don't have to ban uh, Nautilus if they yeah. don't want to because we've seen Renata has been used consistently across the globe as an answer into the champion. So they can get rid of some of the other more nuance. They can ban away the Rakan. I think they can consider the Pike as well if they mm. considered it a problem. Maybe they don't. After the first game, maybe they think that it's perfectly fine, but they can actually choose to leave the Nautilus open, which while offering a lot of crowd control, uh, won't have that say, uh, will give them still a strong 2v2 matchup. Yeah, and uh, the Yone is going to be banned away here. A lot of respect for the first time that Zayas picked up that champion. And uh, of course, no uh, Rakan is going to happen. If uh, Zaya can't have Rakan, no one, I guess, is the thought. Is Nautilus will be safety banned anyway. Could be Nar again. Nar was uh, their top lane bin last time when they wanted to go blind tank. You know, that is kind of just like a standard option. That it's an amazing matchup against Orn. But I'm really curious to see Zayas again being pushed further kind of down the pool here. You know, does he have a really aggressive pick? Aatrox is also something that's just super popular that you can use as an answer. This was Jace really popular in fine. NA. Jace is fine as well. Um, I, actually, I feel like Jace up, has though, not the greatest of matchups into the Orn specifically. But it is Gnar. Yep. Yeah. So they, they leave up the Gnar. Like, last time around, they did ban that as the top laner. This time, more worried about the cannon, uh, which is a little bit interesting. Um, and it is going to be Gnar. So we'll have to see how he can actually handle that matchup. Yeah, I mean, this is something that uh, Zayas is very, very comfortable on. He yeah. debuted on this champion, had an extraordinary performance in his first game. This is when we're like, oh man, Kana, watch out for your position. And then Zayas had a few less inspiring games after that last year, of course, in 2021, before he found a lot of stability. Um, but this is certainly something that he's uh, very, very comfortable on, especially into the on matchup. As Zoe, another big pick for this tournament. Um, is going to come through. I think it was Caps that uh, decided to go with this one first uh, here at MSI. Yeah, he used it as an answer. I think to Zhao, who uh, I forget exactly what I think it was Ari, was, right? Yeah. But it was something along those lines. In any case, the pipe looks to be coming out once more. The front line primarily is going to be in the top side of the map. Uh, Ooh. Ooh, as I say that, a quick Lane pivot focused. to give them a little bit more agency in the two versus two, a little bit more range and a little bit more prowess, along with the shielding and the, the utility that Karma provides, it offers a little bit more scaling towards the side of G2 as well. The big question is, how will Faker now round out this draft? A lot of mobility on the side of Tier 1. They have a little bit of an engage with uh, Nar, but their primary goal is counter-engage here. So how Whoa. will they round things out? The Akali is what they're considering okay. right now, and he will lock it in. Okay. okay. It's the uh, the classic Akali Lee Sin combination, having them on the same team, certainly something that everyone is that a very. Classic? I mean, it is in the LCK. We oh. love just picking Lee Sin and Akali together. Um, no matter how things have changed uh, with Vision and Shrouds and things like that, it's still something that we love pairing together. And Faker has loved this champion as well. But this is feeling like a bit of a flex into Zoe, because this could be difficult, especially early. 
Yeah, it'll be interesting to see how he can actually play that out. A lot of these, these range matchups can be difficult in the early levels for Akali, but you go into second win, you start de-shield, you really just try to sustain and kind of get your farm. Uh, I'm super interested though how G2's bottom lane goes, because I think it has to go well or it's going to be really bad. And I do think they have a lot of power here, especially they could even go double Comet here if they want. You start MF plus Q with Comet on Karma. You get the slowdown. It makes it very difficult to actually dodge that Karma poke, but we'll see how heavily they want to index into early laning. I will say of all three drafts, this one is probably my least favorite from T1. Um, the Akali... I'm going to trust Faker, right? He's, he knows more than me about the mid-lane matchup. Guy. Yeah, and, <laughs> and in terms of the matchup, in terms of what he sees, I'm going to uh, default to trust here because there's no reason to, to question him. It's more like when I look at the comp in its entirety, I don't see how this T1 comp functions without the enemy engaging onto them. And the thing is, while Nocturne is typically dive, you have Zoe, you have MF Salty, you have uh, not. Orn's ults can be used as a ranged engaged as well. Like, there's actually a lot of distance that they can use, which I don't think T1 have many tools to close that gap outside of a good Lee Sin flank or a Nar flank. So I am a little concerned with the options that T1 will have, and they're very reliant on G2 kind of coming into them and being the proactive team. And I will say, you know, because T1 is such an early game team, is so early game dominant, if you get lead, it's very easy to be first at the objective and the opponents have to come to you. True. Right? So I think if you're depending on winning your lanes, well, T1's a pretty good team to be able to do that. And as far as the Akali pick, you know, in my eyes, there's just a lot of squishy members over on G2. Sure. Zoe, MF, as well as the Karma, all very squishy. And it is actually going to be Comet MF. So I, I was thinking they might go towards this. It's yeah. super lane focused. You start Comet, you start E. Um, it is going to be airy and exhaust because there's an Akali. I think yes. you just like have to. I agree. Uh, so you can't go Ignite. So it's not full, full offense, which would have been Comet on Karma as well and Ignite. But this is a very strong 2v2. G2 should have a really good time in this 2v2, and we'll see if they can really make the most of that. Yeah, and it's also fantastic because this is a game where G2, it's not just an even matchup in the mid lane, it's a very, very uh, yeah. caps-sided uh, uh, matchup as far as the early stages of the game. So being able to play around that bottom side won't have Faker just looming ever present with that threat. It will be more Caps being able to make his way down. And he does have the Ignite there as well. Not going to exactly be able to teleport, but will have a lot more power uh, on those roams as well. So Faker going to move back here towards the mid lane as we get this laning started. We'll see how T1 is going to go. One of the really cool things about this T1 comp, I want to say, I agree that it's not been their best so far in this best of five. But if you get a Gnar into the wall and a, pe a perfect execution laid across, that is going to feel fantastic. I mean, for sure. And I very much agree with Zale that when uh, when you're in Akali and you look at that, those champions across the board, you I think, can kill them. I can kill all of them. <laughs> yes, exactly. Um, and all you need is one good flank. And we've seen how great T1 is at getting that vision control, setting up for these objectives. So yeah. again, I'm always going to default to trust when it comes to Faker. Um, I'm just excited to see how he actually makes his success. That's works, a flash, the flash comes handshake. in. Handshake, yeah. Targamus already burning down. Does have the blade call it is going to be Yushi, but he's not going to be able to actually lock down any kills or anything like that. But certainly sending a message in the early game. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, they get the push here early on, and they're just they're just straight up hitting more of their skill shots, right? You know, Targamus hasn't been able to connect with as many of the Qs. They get the push here. Yankos, they're not going to expect this. A wrap around without even having his red buff here. Absolutely no vision, oh, but Kerry is going to spot him. Gumiushi now trying to walk this one out. The flash out of the Duskbringer. Okay. Gumiushi is going to now not have that escape option as this lane continues. So expect a little bit less aggression from T1 down here. Yeah, absolutely. They're going to have to at least have eyes on where the G2 members are, Yankos in particular here, uh, because he could look for some sort of a repeat play. But, you know, T1's bot lane getting very aggressive here, trying to play in the face of their opponents. Uh, really, you want to have the push when you're playing this type of a combo because Karma under her tower is so easy to actually deal with. But when you are getting pushed in, it becomes very difficult for the enemy AD to dodge your Qs because you know when they're going to step forward for the last hit. You throw the Mantra Q out, it becomes almost impossible, plus the slow there from MF. Um, but if you are getting shoved in, it's just so much easier to kind of stand with the minions between you and the Karma. Game against these these dominant LCK teams, you can beat them. Yeah. You can take them down in best of series. And I think that is really what was so special about G2 coming onto the international scene and showing everyone that it could be done. 
And uh, I mean, if you want to like go back through the history books, back in 2017, it was also like Perks' redemption arc on G2, yeah. getting G2 solo vacation. kills onto Vacaker. Yeah. Uh, to Vacaker. Uh, <laughs> solo <laughs> kills, solo kills onto uh, That's onto one Vaker. heck of a Freudian slip. I don't even know how it you was, fell into uh, that. It was a, such a dramatic change uh, for, for G2 back in 2017. Yeah. Even though T1 did end up winning, it was kind of like the beginning of, of so much change in Europe. So Absolutely. a lot of history. And right now, T1 are on the precipice of finding Even themselves slow. as the victor once again. Caps looking for a kill onto Faker. Oh, the bubble, yeah. there is ignite. bubble is going to go down. As let's see whether Faker finds the right spot. He doesn't. He's going to flash oh, into the oh, wall. That was sick. Sick. Yeah. That was sick. No. Flashes over the wall. <sighs> oh, my God. That was... Uh, he just broke his ankles. Yeah. Oh, and my now Caps God. Is, he's stolen the flash, so he has it at the ready. Is now Faker. He can execute. This and is... there is no way that it can be answered. That was so many... This is the, that's the Reddit like. That's it's the Reddit the, like. It's like the montage <laughs> juke that you're like, there's you no way that would work. Yeah, I remember no seeing that, that like work. six years ago or something. It was like, well, that looks cool from that guy that was playing in Reddit. It's, it's the thing in solo queue where you're literally just like, I can out juke them by staying in yeah, specific yeah, spot because yeah. you expect them to flash in a certain yeah. direction, then you flash in another one, and then Faker just did it. <laughs> <laughs> That's incredible. I mean, he, he, the way he even set it up is so smart. Like, he hugs the top wall showing, hey, I'm flashing over here, and then you flash back towards the pixel brush. And, and it looks silly. Like, from if, if we saw this from Cap his point of view, it, you would yeah, fully we get understand, to do that now. right? Um, you know, Cap's going here, and he, he's hugging that wall. He's going to hit him here. He's looking for the ignite, he so he knows he's against yeah, exactly. the wall. Exactly. And then he flashes. Oh. And from there, you're saying, oh, of course he's flashing to his side. 100% he's flashing to his side. And then he thinks the fake has flashed and then E'd into the Baron into the pit. pit. And uh, you can't blame Caps for that. It, it's just, wow, great heads up from Faker, because he should have died 1v1. Oh, that's a nah back here from Zayas. Is both of, oh, no, Broken Blade. Not quite level 6 just yet. A little bit of an opportunity here, but Yankos understanding that there was uh, some danger, so Zayas not going to be able to commit. And while it does look, you know, really, really kind of crazy, you see at the same time, Caps is way up in front. Yeah, I was going right? to say, so like, even yes, though that it was looked cool, really cool, it's still, a, like, not going very well. Absolutely. <laughs> and, that, and that's huge for Caps, right? So a big play from Faker, because when you're down a bunch of farm and then you get solo killed, the lane can absolutely just be over. So uh, Faker, at the very least, able to avoid that. Does, of course, execute. Uh, but going to be back towards mid lane and trying to you know, catch back up. So I want to draw attention to what Faker is doing right now because we talked about the fact that Caps doesn't have TP mm -hmm. and Faker recognizes that in order to back or run a kite, you have to be very specific in your base timing. So Faker set up a bit of a, a slow push here so that he could freeze the wave underneath his tower. And now he's hit oh, level six. Here. Here coming over, Ona not going to find the Sonic Wave is now Caps. Perfect execution from Faker is not going to be enough to lock down that kill. The Ignite comes down, Handshake onto Targamus, who's going down very low, very squishy now on this Karma, no longer on the Brahmas. Blackard's moved on in as well. Feels like everyone's here. The heal comes out from Kumiyushi. Blackard gonna get slowed down for now. Not quite enough of the feathers, and Blackard's going to have to flash. Gets himself out to safety. Still 0-0 zero, zero on the kill score. Yeah, but thankfully, 41, it does go well for them. You know, forcing out some of these extra summoners here. The wave is slow pushing away from Caps. And he was not able to fix it. T1 had the extra member there, Carrier there first. So Yankos was coming to help him push it out, but then they see Owner there, and then Carrier is there, so you can't actually reset it. Faker goes for this all in, and just bases with the wave pushing towards him, which is going to even up the farm a lot. If we, if we can get eyes on mid lane, there's going to be way more minions for him to farm. So after this gets pushed in, if he can pick up a lot of it, it should be much closer than it was. It's uh, This is something that you will see in pro play, but never in solo queue, where a mid lane and... Oh, hang on. Oh, yeah, ulti comes down towards the bottom side of the map. Gumushi in trouble, and he is going to burn down. I don't think he's going to get enough to get the kill there on that one, and that is going to be the kill secured from G2. That is going to be first blood, and it is Yankos that helps secure it. Nicely done by Yankos, a, a quick level six there. Does get the kills, and Owner with a, a rare misplay. Safeguarding away and then flashing back yeah, in. Yeah, it kind you of know. broke my brain a little bit, I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> yeah, I'm not oh, sure no. if, if he was worried oh, no. that Carrie was gonna go down. Now they're looking for a play here, the slow lands. Yeah, we'll see whether the handshake is going to come in. It does, as Owner is gonna be able to secure it. So one to one now, immediately going to be evened up as T1 do fake out the back. It's a great punish on the missing flash that they forced out in the jungle earlier there on, but uh, owner making good on his earlier mistake, you know, makes up for it. Uh, we can watch this one one more time as Yank goes quick six, he's going to go in. And 
this is some of the early game impact that we wanted to see from Yankos. Able to instantly use his ultimate, recognizing that the bot lane of tier one is just far too overextended. Carrier does invest the flash. Yankos thinks he can get that kill, realizes the safeguard is there to keep Carrier alive, has to disengage. So then owner realizes, hang on, I can actually kill Yankos, chooses to flash back in. And Flackhead, he wants to fix this wave. Unfortunately for him, he doesn't have the assistance needed. And I think it's debatable. Arguably, he should have just gone back here, but he believes that the rest of Tier 1 has reset, yeah. and he ends up getting punished for it. Oh, well, Onhan comes down. Zayas going to flash to get himself out of the way. That is a great ulti from Carrier. A lot of damage now onto Targamus and to Caps as he's just keeping within melee ranges. Now Faker just gets the Q, doesn't pick the right spot to get the ulti over the wall, but the five-point strike no is flash. going to be there. Targamus doesn't have his flash exactly like you were saying. Carrier is going to lock down that kill, and T1 mop up a couple of extras in the river. T1 are punishing these missing summoners so well, knowing they can continue chases because of those track summoners that are going to be up towards Harold, but Flackett at the very least does get a play back on bot side, will deny some of these minions. Gumiyushi though pushing in mid, T1 win the skirmish on top side. You can see they've littered that top side jungle with vision and will grab this. And when you have a losing lane and you lose Harold, it gets very difficult. Ooh, nah, there is going to be the knockup from Broken Blade, they're threatened, but Paranoia oh. comes in. That is going to be immediately the kick out as it's going to be owner that locks down the Herald, but Yankos, can he get anything else done? The, the rest of the team it. are coming in. Caps just looking to lock down Carrier. Carrier is going to try and W himself, but it's not going to quite be enough as Broken Blade flashes over the wall. Yankos eventually does go down. Targum is also just going to be taken off the rift once again as now Caps against the world. Zayas is trying to skip through everything, but it is not going to be him that takes the kill, it's in fact owner that mops it up. And T1 continue to take control over the early game. Look at how quickly the the gold is ballooning in T1's favor as G2, they try to contest the Herald. The thing is, they're strong when their ults are up and they think, hey, maybe we can actually look to contest oh, this. Maybe we have a smite advantage. Way. He kicks him away from the fear as well. He's able to smite secure along with uh, doing enough damage to secure the Herald, and then Carrier, while he does drop, look at how much he's invested. Broken Blade doesn't have the HP to fight this. Gumiyushi is full HP. He's forced to disengage. Caps only level seven to the level nine. Owner's gonna get, well, I don't think he does actually get level eight here, but regardless, there's nothing that Caps can do. And G2, they just, they thought they could force that play. They didn't have the health, and it feels like desperation is starting to come through for G2. And I have to just give so much credit to the timing on that Lee Sing kick. He buffered it perfectly so that Nocturne would arrive, and then is instantly kicked. And Flack, maybe seeing him Die again, bot side, no flash. Yeah, Faker, perfect execution is going to be available, and he throws it out to tidy up the kill very comfortably. Faker in a side lane now, his comfort zone absolutely here on this Akali. I mean, they're just on fire, and owner is looking so good. Guma has flash, but will yeah. not use it. Knockup comes in, that's a fantastic disengage ult from Carrier, though. Finds a handshake just to stun up the solo lanes of G2 here. The Q is going to connect, caps flash over the wall. That is going to keep him alive here, but T1, it feels like they've just come alive in the last few minutes. I just love how T1 is actually pushing the pace of this game. They know that Nocturne wants to fight only around ultimate, so owner saying, no, we're just going to fight constantly or I'm going to take your whole jungle. Oh, that was so cute. The Bellow's Breath is going to be uh, out there, but nice no buffer. kick does come through. Exhaust comes down as uh, owner's just going to move his way out, and he can just do everything with Reckless Abandon, and there's no punishment. And I think that you, you highlighted it there, Azale. T1 are just playing around that window very well. I think that it all started with that initial skirmish where they got that pick onto Caps. Mm -hmm. The thing about Akali is with Sork Boots and level six, that's kind of where you're at a point where you can look to force these small skirmishes. And when you think about the matchup, sure in lane, it's not great, but when you're able to pair up with your jungler and kind of go for these 2v2 situations, that is really where this Akali becomes very fluid and easy to execute in a composition like this. And we saw, even with the exhaust thrown down from Targamus, it didn't matter. He just sat in his shroud, he waited with his E, and then he's able to re-engage. So uh, T1 picked the exact right window to force all of these skirmishes, and they've just been picking G2 apart, and then G2 tried to respond, and then T1 gets the better of them again. And there are just very open windows that T1 know they can force these plays, and they're able to balloon this gold lead out of control. Yeah, and I mean, it's starting to feel like game one all over again. It's about 6.5K in the gold lead here, 13 minutes in for T1. Absolute domination here from the LCK number one seed. Yeah, 7,000 be... gold almost the lead is. Yeah. I mean... Much larger than what we saw. I was wondering which game one you were referring to as uh, knockup does come down on Tsugumi Of course, their first of the tournament was yeah. a very large lead as well, uh, which G2 were able to come out ahead of. And it was with things like the Orn that now G2 have 
uh, for themselves as Caps was looking for Gumiushi. Good Ignite to go down there, but doesn't find the Paddle Star. His owner just going to wait until Targamus goes down, but it's not going to be enough. He does eventually get back in there. Q going to land as well, and now Zoe feeling like a sitting duck right now. Has to go back to that portal jump. Wishes he didn't, as now Black is going to get dove on once again. Fake has got the second activation, but it's not going to quite be enough damage as he didn't want to get underneath that turret. Oh. oh, not quite enough as the bullet time is just going to push Faker away. Everything's just coming up T1. 8,000 gold lead. Make it even more. We'll see if they can get Faker. Yeah, flashes nope. to get himself out of the way of the ram. And I think he's still got a backflip or two yeah. available to him, so he'll be absolutely fine. You can just feel the momentum slipping away from G2. There are so many things that are happening across the map where it's just not typical G2, right? Individually, they're making small misplays. Like, you, you can see Flack had had his ultimate while Faker was underneath his tower, and then he holds on to it. He waits to see how close Faker is, and then he throws it out and is not able to get this kill. Targamus, they don't have any control on this side of the map. He's trying to drop vision oh, when his top lane is backing, and he ends up getting punished for it. And it's just T1 is riding the control. Look, they're pushing all three lanes on the map right now, and they are just not slowing down. They realize the position that they're in, and they're not giving G2 a second to breathe. Well, Paranoia just to get over the wall. Nice Big nah, but it's a great spell shield from Yankos, exactly as you say. Targamus now comes in, has the exhaust. It's now Flackens here as well. Four versus one. Azeus does now have it, oh. and he keeps himself alive. Thanks, Carrier, for that one. And Carrier even grabs himself the kill as well. Zayas now with a grump. It's just going to eat that one up and be a little bit more healthy. Gumiushi now looks for it. Mini stun into the wall. Targamus is taken down. Gumiushi tidies up that kill also, and G2... Oh man, I mean, four versus one, and still Carrier gets there in time. It's just bullying at this point, isn't it? They can't even get the one kill. Carrier arriving in time for the bailout. Cap's gonna look here now, but owner can easily block. Yeah. And it's just been the owner show. 10 out of 11 KPs running everywhere. Bumiushi is going to get taken down here, most likely. I mean, I've said that a few times. He, he does have flash, and so he is. Just going to try to create that distance. There's a hostile takeover from Carrier. He now wraps himself around. Caps is still looking to try and get that locked down. A massive Nara into the wall. That's going to be Faker locking down the kill as everyone's turned up. Gumi Yushi's going to kill Caps. And gentlemen, I don't think that G2 have anything left in the tank for this game. T1 are just styling right now. You can see the collapse happening for G2, and T1 is taking advantage of it. Pick after pick, play after play, T1 refuses to slow down with their aggression. They are constantly going for skirmishes. They are consistently outplaying G2, and they are looking to secure their revenge and make their way back to an MSI final. Just looking incredible here. 13,000 gold lead, almost 1,000 per minute yeah. of League of Legends that we have played. They are getting ahead. They are running everywhere, just absolutely styling on G2, getting kills at will. Yeah, and this is this is what we were talking about before, but this time it's the owner show. Like, 5, 0, and 9 on the Lee Sin. He is one kill away from 100% uh, kill contribution on this Lee Sin, and it feels like he's the carry this time around. Yes, Faker in side lanes has been fantastic, but this Lee Sin just everywhere so far, making everything happen, and this is what we saw from Owner in the LCK final for Spring. This is why he was the finals MVP, mm -hmm. and uh, his Lee Sin is still just incredible here in this semi-final. I mean, he has been amazing, and we've gotten to see many times over why Karia was the spring MVP as well. Oh, that's an R, and Zayas is just going to pop the Zoe. We'll see where the Yankos can answer this one. As, yep, everyone's coming down to try and take him out this time, but the Ram's going to be there. That's oh. two. Two versus with five people down here. The rest of T1 are launching themselves towards these inhibitor turrets. Zayas takes two with him. And they can push for the win potentially here. We'll see how far they want to go at the very least. They will get this one inhibitor. They have Shelly. Will they play it safe? Will they play it controlled? It's 17 to 3. They're 14,000 gold ahead. Yeah, bullet time going to be used just to tidy up the minion wave. They do manage to take down Shelly there with that one as well. Sorry, Shirley. I correct myself as T1 will grab this inhibitor turret as well. G2 now just trying to protect it and they will be able to do so. G2, just a slight amount of breathing room now. It was G2 that held the record for the fastest best of five internationally ever. And yeah. T1 is now on the verge of getting a sub 20 minute win against G2 who held that record. An incredibly dominant performance from T1. And it felt like that coming into this game, G2 had a plan. They, they 
They were able to get a few comfort picks, but play after play, pick after pick, T1 have just been outperforming, and we see Zeus doing this once again. We've been seeing it all year long, the promise, the potential of this young player, but he basically isolates into two 1v1s. He's able to secure one kill, he secures a second, and while he loses his life, the benefits for T1 are more than worth it. I mean, it's just heartbreaking to, to lose out in those types yeah. of situations. He had the early two items, now even building towards potentially a, a wit's end third, just going full all in for the damage. They know they are so far ahead here. You know, Faker working towards uh, his second item. We already have two through for Gumiyushi, two and a half for Zeus, two for Owner. You look on the other side, you know, it's one only and sometimes not even one in the case of broken blade they're just so far behind it's almost unthinkable to, to try to conceive of how they could come back yeah it's a it's a very very difficult prospect as broken blade thinking about this one gumushi getting taken down below half right now it's g2 just desperate to try and protect this faker in the mid lane getting that split push happening of course there will be super creeps there to knock down that door but not gonna find the q just yet g2 Holding on for the moment. Their wave clear is pretty good. And of course, it's not like the Baron hasn't spawned. Still got 10 seconds. That's a flash in for the hostile takeover. The kick comes forward onto Cap's butt. They are trying to get themselves back to Nara into the wall from Zayas. He throws the boulder through and all four just get wiped from the ripped placard. Just left walking back to the fountain. The teleport to the mid lane. And in 20 minutes, T1 are looking to end this game. T1 wipe G2 off the map, and Flackett is left alive to watch as his base crumbles. T1, 3-0, will look to claim their revenge against G2. And an incredibly swift best of five as well, as now Flackett's gonna be taken down. Both of these Nexus turrets go down, and T1, much like RNG did in their semi-final, will get a 3-0 over the Western team. A few extra kills at the end, but there it is. T1 looking to try and claim their third MSI title and deny the reigning MSI world champions theirs. For the MSI first... world champ, M MSI champions, <laughs> not world champions, I'm sorry. <laughs> For the first time in five long years, T1 will return to the international final stage here, and they left no doubt about it. One of the most dominant best of fives I have seen in a long, long time. T1 were relentless, they were aggressive, they played with momentum, they got advantages, they expanded those advantages, and this team looks like one that is worthy of facing off against RNG, that is playing on such a high level. Gumiyushi and Karia came alive today, and all of T1 truly showing why they are all world class in their own right. A terrifying team, for sure.